So let's remind ourselves how to graph linear equations. What, what's the trick for knowing it's a, it graphs to be a line? If the exponent on the y is 1, you don't see it, it's a 1, right? And the exponent on the x is a 1, if you don't see it, it's a 1. It's going to graph to be a line, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a linear equation, but keep in mind what we're doing. When we graph a linear equation, we're just graphing all the solutions to that uh, equation. So one way to do that is to plot points. Remember that? You make a t-chart. If you're Catholic, you, right? <laughs> make a cross. Okay. Uh, so t-chart, x, the input variable x. Why do I call it the input variable? Because y is by itself. So I think of inputting for x. And then the output I think of as the y variable. So the input variable is x. That goes on the left. The output variable is y. That goes on the right. And then what would be some good inputs? What would be some good x values to plot? Zero is a good one. Are you prejudiced? Yeah, don't be prejudiced against negative numbers. Negative one is a good one. And then, uh, well, positive one. Yeah, you don't need to get too creative. Okay, so, when you, so you have y equals 3x is your equation. When you plug in negative one, what do you get for the y value? When you plug in negative one for x, what do you get for the y value? 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. What do you get when you plug in 0? What do you get when you plug in 1 for x? 3. You actually only need two points to plot a line, but it's nice to plot 3 as kind of a check to make sure they all lie in line. If one of them, if one of them doesn't look like it's in line with the other two, then you know you did something wrong. Okay, so negative 1, negative 3. Like that, left one, down three, zero, zero, that's the origin, over one, up. I'm going to get my ruler tool out here. What does the arrow on the end uh, of, on the ends of the line mean? It keeps going forever, right? There's an infinite number of solutions. So that's a depiction of it. In other words, any ordered pair on that line, you know, uh, not just the ones we plotted, but this one, this one, you could get one in between any two you plot. Any ordered pair on this line is a solution to this equation. So we can, you know, the old saying is a picture says a thousand words, right? No, it says an infinite number of words here because there's an infinite number of solutions that, that this picture is depicting. Okay, does everybody understand what a graph really is? We, sometimes we forget, oh, it's just the solutions to the equation. Okay, so how about y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2? Let's plot points. That's what we did in the last problem. When we make that t-chart, we just plot points. But you should probably try to be strategic about which points you plot. When you're doing this by hand, it's nice, if you can, to avoid fractions or decimals. So anything that's 4 or a multiple of 4 is a nice thing to plug in, right? Also, 0 works, right? Which technically is a multiple of 4. So we could put 0, whoops. We could put 0, say, here, leave room for negative numbers. What happens if we plug in 0 for x? So we get y equals negative 3 fourths times 0 plus 2. What happens to this whole thing? It's 0. So you just get 2. So 0, 2 is a solution to the equation. And so it's on the graph of the equation. Okay, you, somebody said 4. That's a good one. So if we want to plug in 4, uh, let's plug it in down here. If we want to plug in 4, uh, why did you pick 4? Let's see if we can see why you picked 4. So we, we're plugging in 4 for x right there. So in, in right here, we're plugging in 4. Why is it helpful to plug in 4? Right. The 4s go away. You know, you've got a, a multiplication by 4, a division by 4. That makes 1. What are you left with, by the way, when you take negative 3 fourths times 4? Just negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 1. 
So 4, negative 1 is a solution to the equation, which means it's on the graph of the equation. Does that make sense? Uh, what's a good negative value to do? How about negative 4? Yeah. Do you see if you picked 1 here, you'd get like negative 3 fourths plus 2, which wouldn't be a whole number? That, that's the problem. I mean, you could do it. It's just not convenient, especially when you're doing it by hand. So negative 4. Okay, let's see what happens when you plug in negative 4. Negative 3 fourths times you're plugging in 4 where that x was. I'll do that in red. And then plus 2. Yeah, it was negative 4 we wanted to plug in. Otherwise, I already did that one, didn't I? Let me fix that. I did that one down here. So negative 4. Okay, so how does that change it? What's negative 3 fourths times negative 4? What's going to happen to the negatives? The negatives go away, and then, of course, 4s go away. You're left with positive 3 this time as opposed to negative 3. 3 plus 2, 5. So plot those points. Make sure they all lie in a line, and then you're probably right. So uh, 0, 2 is the first. I'm plotting this one first uh, for whatever reason. doesn't really matter. And then 4, negative 1. And then negative 4, 5. One, two, three, negative four, and then up five. There we go. Uh, let's. Draw the line. OK. What happens if you don't quite make it through your point, but you know you're right? Just make the point a little bigger. There you go. <laughs> make the point a little bigger. There you go. OK, looks good. So that line depicts all the solutions to that equation, y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2.